Hello tech lovers! In this video, I will talk about the evolution of mobile communications. Since the first generation of mobile telephony, 1G, up to the fifth generation of mobile telephony, the 5G. But first, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments below. By doing this, you will be helping the channel to grow so that I can produce videos with more and more quality. My name is Sheldon Remani and welcome to my channel. As I was saying, a new generation of cellular system appears every 10 years or so, with the latest generation, the 4G, being introduced in 2011. Following this trend, the 5G cellular system is expected to be standardized and deployed by the early 2020s. This image illustrates a short chronological history of cellular radio systems from their infancy in the 70s with 1G, which is the first generation of mobile communications, until the 2020s with 5G, which is the fifth generation of mobile communications. The major steps in the evolution of the cellular mobile systems are now shown in this figure and will be described in this same video. Before 1G, or better, before 1983, the first commercial analog mobile communication systems were deployed in the 50s and 60s, although with low penetration. The year 1981 witnessed the birth of the first commercial deployments of the first generation of mobile cellular standards, such as CNETs in Germany, Portugal, and South Africa. Total access communication systems in the United Kingdom and advanced mobile phone systems AMPS in the Americas and others. And in that time, all the wireless communications were voice centric and used analog systems with single sideband modulation, the SSB. In 1966, Bell Labs had made the decision to adopt analog systems for a high-capacity mobile system. Because at that time, the digital radio systems were very expensive to manufacture. The 1G technology standards are called the analog standards, since they utilize analog technology, <laughs> of course. Typically, frequency modulated radio signals with a digital signaling channel. The European Conference of Postal and Telecommunications Administrations CEPT, decided in 1982 to develop a pan-European 2G mobile communications system. This was the starting point of the Global System for Mobile Communications, the JSCM, the dominant 2G standard which was deployed internationally from 1991. The introduction of 2G technology was characterized by the adoption of digital transmission and switching technology standards, since they utilized digital technology, of course. Thus, we could say that moving from 1G to 2G means migrating from an analog system to the digital system. The digital communication allowed considerable improvements in voice quality and network capacity, and offered also a growth in the form of supplementary services and advanced application such as short message services for storage and forwarding of textual information. The primary purpose of GSM, the 2G, was to create a common digital voice telephony network that allowed international roaming across Europe. GSM is based on a hybrid of time division multiple access, the TDMA, and frequency division multiple access, the FDMA method in contrast with 1G system, based only on FDMA. And in parallel with DSM, other digital 2G systems were developed around the globe and competed with each other. These are the main two standards include the North American TDMA, the NEA TDMA standard, CDMA1 and Personal Digital Cellular, PDC. The last one is used exclusively in Japan. The evolution of 2G is called 2.5G. The 2.5G introduced packet switch data services, in addition to voice and circuit switch data. The main 2.5G standards, the General Packet Radio Services, the GPRS, was an extension of GSM. 
Soon afterwards, GSM was evolved further into the edge, the enhanced data rates for evolution, and its associated packet data component, e.g. PRS, the enhanced general packet radio series, mainly by addition of higher order of modulation and coding schemes. The GSM edge, or the 2.5G, has continued to evolve and the latest release of the 3GPP standard supports a wider bandwidth and carrier aggregation for the air interface. And all the wireless communications were mainly for high capacity voice with limited data service. The CDMA Core Division Multiple Access System was using 1.25 MHz bandwidth, was adopted in the USA. In the same time, European countries enhanced the GSM to GPRS and edge systems. Shortly after 2G became operational, industrial players were already preparing and discussing the next wireless generation standards. In parallel, the International Telecommunications Union and the Radio Communications ITUR developed the requirements for the system that would qualify for the International Mobile Telecommunication 2000, the IMT 2000 classification. In 1998, CDMA was divided in two variants, Wideband Code Division Multiple Access, the WCDMA, and Time Division CDMA, the TDCDMA, was adopted by the European Telecommunication Standards Institute, the ETSI, as a universal mobile telecommunication system, UMTS. UMTS was the major 3G mobile communication system and was one of the first cellular systems to qualify for the IMT 2000. The third generation or 3G is the first international standard system released from ITU. In contrast to the previous generation, the 3G exploits WCDMA that is the wideband code division multiple access and this technology uses 5 MHz of bandwidth. It operates in both modes, frequency division duplex, FDD and time division duplex, the TDD modes. Thus, we could say that migrating from 2G to 3G technology, we have evolved from voice centric systems to data centric systems. Within the framework of the third generation partnership project, 3GPP, new specifications were developed together known as 3G Evolution. For this evolution, two red access network RAM, approaches and an evolution of the core network were suggested. The first RAN approach was based on the evolution steps in CDMA 2000. The second RAN approach was High Speed Packet Access, HSPA. HSPA was a combination of high speed downlink packet access, HSDPA, added in 3GPP release 5, and high speed uplink packet access, HSUPA, added in 3GPP release 6. Both initially enhanced the packet data rate to 14.6 megabits per second in the downlink and to 5.76 megabits per second in the uplink and quickly evolved to handle higher data rates with the introduction of MIMO. Multiple input, multiple All output. All 3GPP standards follow the philosophy of adding new features while still maintaining backward capabilities. This has been further applied in an evolution of HSPA, known as HSPA+ which supports carrier aggregation of higher peak data rates without affecting existing terminals in the market. In this generation, the wireless communication platform has voice and data capabilities. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and share the video. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Tell me what you want me to talk about in the next videos. Until next time, hey yo!